You can create custom HTML elements or web components using JavaScript and then attach them to the DOM using a shadow DOM to use them in a web page. So shadow DOM is something which allows us to keep the custom elements separate with their markup styles and attached behavior and they do not interfere with the rest of the elements of the DOM. So if you want to learn how to create your own self-contained web components and then use them, then watch this video till the end and see how you can do that. Also while watching, if you think that this video is helpful for you, then don't be shy and please like it and subscribe to this channel. If you don't already know what DOM or document object model is, then it is a tree-like representation of every web page and their contents. So DOM is a structure where there are nodes which are connected to each other. Each node represents HTML elements added to the web page. So what is Shadow DOM? Shadow DOM allows us to create entire new node tree and attach it to an existing DOM node. This node tree representing the Shadow DOM is called as the Shadow Tree. The root of the Shadow Tree is called as Shadow Root and the DOM node to which the shadow root is connected to is called as a shadow host. Now a shadow DOM is primarily used to create custom HTML elements which are also called as web components. You must have seen at times various elements which have a bunch of children but you cannot access them directly using the DOM. Well those web components are attached to the DOM via a shadow root. Also, you can set the mode of a shadow DOM either to open or closed, but nowadays it doesn't really help to set it to close because there are ways to access them so it's not just worth the effort. Let's now see a simple code example and learn how we can use shadow DOM to create a custom element. So to create a custom element, first we have to create a class for it which should extend from the HTML element class. So let's create a custom element to display the first name and last name of a person and then use the first name and last name to print a message. To do that, first let's create a class and let's just call it as person name and this should extend from the HTML element class of JavaScript. Now let's create a constructor and the first thing that we need to do within the constructor is to call the super function. If you will not call this super function, then the this keyword of this class object will not be initialized and it will point to undefined. So in order to use the this keyword for this class, like for example, to add new properties, you must first call super in the constructor of a derived class. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a shadow element. So to do that, let's just create a new variable using the let keyword. And then this can be done by this dot attach shadow so we are calling this method on this object or on this class person name in this attach shadow method we need to provide an object with the value of mode so modes value can either be open or it can be closed if you want to be able to access the shadow tree of this element using the main dom then you will have to set the value of mode to open otherwise you will have to set it to close but as i have told you there are ways to access the shadow element even if the mode has been set to closed. So I think it doesn't really matter if you set it to open or closed. Now let's create a root element for our custom element person name. So for this I am going to create a div by calling document.create element and the reference is going to be stored in this element root. Next let's create the labels and the inputs for first name and last name. So this is just usual stuff. I am using the document.create element to create the elements and then get their references in variables. So this is the first name label. This is for the last name and these are the inputs for first name and last name. Now let's start to append these inputs in our element root and that can be done by simply calling element root dot append or you can also use append child but you know what let's just use append for this purpose. So let's first append the first name label and first name element. So F name label and then F name element. Now let's put a line break between the first name input and the last name input. So for that, we can just create a new element for our line break. So document dot create element and then 
we just have to provide the element name which is br and now let's append the label and input for last name so this is the last name element and this is the last name label now i'm going to create a new element to output the text so for that let's create a new span element again let's put a line break between the span and the last name element and then let's append the span element to the element root so this can be done like this finally we have to wire up the change events for the first name and last name input so whenever the first name and last name inputs will be changed then we will have to output a message to this span span output so for that i am going to create a new function and i'm going to assign it as a property to this class so let's call the function as name element you know what name element change because we are going to assign to the change event so we can create an arrow function for that so inside this arrow function we just have to set the inner html of this span output so span output dot inner html equals to let's set the message using a tokenized string so hello dollar and then um this is the parenthesis so f name element dot value and then a space and then let's set the value for last name element and that should be it that we need to do so finally we need to wire up the events for first name and last name so let's do that f name dot add event listener now whenever the value will be changed then we are going to update the message so change and then this dot basically we have to invoke this function whenever the value will be changed and we can use the same code for the last name element too so let's just do that now the last thing that we need to do is we have to add this element root as a child to this shadow element and to do that we can normally call the shadow element dot append and then we can provide the element root as an argument so our class has been created but we still have to define a custom element for our person name component to do that i am just going to you know what after this class i am just going to call custom elements dot define and then we need to provide the tag of the custom element which should be person name and then we have to provide the constructors of a constructor we can provide the class name person name class and then now all we need to do is to add this custom element this person name element to the body of our page so let's do that now let's run this page in the browser to see if it is working as expected or not so you can see there are two inputs first name and last name although they are not styled in a very good way but still we just have to test if our shadow dom is working for our custom element or not so let's put in the value for the first name and last name so for the first name let's put john and for second name let's put do so you can see whenever we are changing the value for the first name and last name then the event is firing this is how you can use shadow dom to create self-contained encapsulated web components thanks for watching this video i'm nitej take care and have fun